uh, a warm virtual welcome, please, for Dave Lounsbury, CTO of the Open Group. Over to you, Dave. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, so, I'm, as Steve said, I'm CTO of the Open Group, and we've heard some great examples today of the transition of organizations to delivery of value through digital means. Um, so I want to give an overview of what the open group members mean and what our standards mean when we talk about digital, how we're responding to this fundamental change in industry direction. And I'll do that by first talking a little bit about our first deliverable in this area with the DP Box standard and some of the lessons we learned during the DP Box standard leading to development of a set of principles for other digital standards. And we'll, we'll close if time permits with some examples of that. And also, there's a session later in the day uh, where you'll hear uh, many more details. So uh, we, we've got this cartoon. I want to thank uh, Tom Fishborn, who's a good friend of the Open Group, for letting us uh, use this cartoon. And of course, we see we hear a lot about people's confusion about digital transformation. And if you're confused about digital transformation, you're really not alone, right? And the confusion is rooted in a lot of things, a lot of misunderstandings and lack of a roadmap of how to go. And we should focus in, again, not necessarily on the journey, though the journey is important, but on the destination you know, of being not the digital transformation, but focusing on what it means to be a digital enterprise, what it means to have a sustainable business with digital value delivery. And to do that, you need to look, you know, past the, the transformation, you know, process and to your actual 2B state and the skills and processes you need to operate in a sustainable way. So this is not a unique uh, realization here. Um, I want to let people read this quote from um, uh, the book Design for Digital, which I highly recommend for everybody. Um, I think most people know Gene Ross wrote um, Enterprise Architecture as Strategy. And this is, you know, she in doing her update to that book found this profound uh, transformation as well. The industry is changing. We need to look past you know, the architecture and program management strategies we've used in the past, the problem of reorienting our organizations to, be the, to focus on value delivery through digital technology. And you know, just some other sites, some other folks who have recognized that, who you may know, George Westerman, you know, he's talked about a lot about digitization, how you could use digital technology to radically improve performance or the reach of your enterprise. And you, you know, this is where you talk about things like the, um, you know, analytics or use of uh, social technology, smart embedded devices. And these are things we've done all along in IT. We've always used IT to improve the efficiency of our organizations, at least if we're doing our jobs right. Um, and so the fundamental shift here, and this is the one that, you know, is uh, Jeannie Ross's catchphrase is don't confuse digitization with digital. Uh, don't confuse the technologies and the, and the management processes with the reorientation of your business process to digital delivery. And, you know, her, her other catchphrase is, you know, what's the Uber moment for your company? You know, when do you know that you're, you're really a digital business? Now, this is something the Open Group has been uh, realizing for a while and catching up with. I just showed this slide. It's something we started as a very rough architecture for how we would manage our standards from over a year ago now. And so we want to be, uh, we, the Open Group, really want to have the open standards you need to achieve uh, a sustainable digital enterprise. And so I'll go a little bit, as I said, into our first deliverable about that, what our, what our vision, what our vision that drove that, and um, what we're doing about it in the long run. So we do perceive this market demand. Um, the big standards that, uh, standards activities in that digital portfolio Steve mentioned are our DP box standard, which are skills for digital workforce. Of course, we're known very well for our architecture portfolio. We've got some very exciting things going on there, which includes our um, uh, open architecture framework, agile architecture framework, OAAF, and of course, the digital knowledge that is going to be put into a future version of TOGAF. 
our IT for IT reference architecture, which Palab mentioned is going to be reoriented towards digital uh, product portfolio management. And we have ongoing work in a digital platform reference architecture. And I'll say a few words later about how we're going to guide all this with a set of principles for open digital standards. So let's talk about the DP bot for a little bit. How did we get there? How did we get to this, this digital journey? And, and what's driving us from these you know, mega shifts we've heard? So of course, you know, I'm I'm you know close to the end of my career. So what do people of my generation do? You blame the millennials, right? So we always like to blame the millennials. But in fact, as Palat noted, uh, these people are showing us the way to the digital future. Um, people achieve digital literacy quickly. They've grown up with these are people who have grown up with digital access, and they expect to interact with your enterprise digitally, even if they're only doing a web search and checking your reputation on their social networks. And this is a really important thing to note because <clears throat> their ability to do this conveniently is going to outweigh any loyalty they have to your product, service, or brand, right? This is where they're going to go. They're very empowered by all of this, and that will affect how they interact with you. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no reason we can't respond to this demand. We have abundant computing and networking resources, and really nobody lacks the technical means to meet the expectations of digital natives. Um, a lot of companies are in the midst of reorganizing to meet these, these new expectations. Um, and again, kudos to Philips for, for realizing that kind of value transformation. But we have to be honest that a lot of companies are still struggling with how to do so. And one of the things that we think is important is, and this is what drove us to the DP Bach, is a workforce with the knowledge to turn the, those technical resources into value for the digital customer. And the ability to train and manage that kind of a digital workforce is going to be a key differentiator for digital first enterprises. So we need to codify this knowledge somehow. And it's important for us to realize that if you're a business person, you're an architect, you're a manager, if you succeed, then someone other than you is going to be doing the work. Either you delegated it or it's going to be a long running decision. If you're successful, it's going to be someone is going to pick that up and carry it on beyond you. So we need to arm the people who are going to execute that with the knowledge they need to succeed. And so we kind of owe this to our workforces and to the next generation to get this stuff codified. Good example of this I want to pop up here is um, this is a picture of a class that is actually being taught at the University of St. Thomas uh, out of the uh, DP Bach. And I bring this up. We've got another example, I think, at Ohio State University. I think we're going to hear from um, Mike Fulton a little bit later. Uh, digital talent is probably going to be one of the biggest challenges you face as a, as a manager making this digital transformation. There's a co strong correlation between enterprises who have successfully transform to a digital first orientation and those who invest in the digital workforces. There are many, many uh, um, use cases of this. And so we want to make sure that we're making that knowledge available to those entering the digital workforce. So uh, you've seen this slide, you know, digital is fueled by these underlying technologies, but also by the agile and DevOps principles uh, that enable IT to respond to business needs quickly. And these are an important part of what it means to be digital. And you're also going to employ all of the things I mentioned earlier, social, mobile, cloud, big data, and advanced analytics, Internet of Things, and AI. These things come at you from all directions, and you're going to need a good framework to make sense of these, or you're going to end up chasing lots of shiny toys and not really making the digital business transformation. So this led us to the concept of a body of knowledge for this digital transformation. And we, of course, you know, we're a standards organization. Standards are our product. And so this BAC is a product. Of course, the first thing you ask with a product is, who's the audience, right? And here's who we've targeted that DP BAC for. Uh, it's people who are entering their careers, um, either college students in 
uh, in master's level IT training or uh, entry level computing and digital business professionals. Um, we also see a, and this is a strong driver for DP Bach, that there was a uh, need for mid career IT professionals to reskill. And of course, they're all going to be managed by senior business professionals up to and including C level who want to learn their digital practices. And then, of course, there's the people who help us find and maintain that workforce. Since we're all agile people, we have always asked ourselves, what's the job to be done? Really, what needs to be the, either both the process and the content for this DP box? You know, how do we know when we succeed? And so we, we took a look, and one of this is one of our key learnings. What do we need for this open standard? Well, it does need to be open. There needs to be open and participatory governance. Uh, digital is a very fast moving field, and we need to make sure that it's open to input from everybody. As we've heard on both of uh, Palab's and uh, Revy's presentation, uh, lean and agile is essential. If you're not doing rapid feedback, it's not going to work. And so we need to have that as the principal foundation of what we're doing for our, uh, our digital practices. We, of course, want to learn from the older guidance and frameworks that are out there in the industry. We want to distill that into a set of trusted content that people can use. And we want to make sure that there are effective training methods for that information. If we believe if we do that, we will be able to educate people successfully. They will become personally successful. And that, of course, that having that successful and knowledgeable workforce leads to or overall organizational success. So we need that open standard for digital practice that curates that knowledge in an open way. So the open group has always had a principle of reuse before build. So we ask ourselves, do we really need a new standard given the plethora of industry frameworks that are already out there? And the answer is yes. Um, a lot of the existing guidance does not actually uh, incorporate some of these essential digital, uh, agile, and DevOps uh, ideas that are in there. They are um, they're too prescriptive uh, on that. Um, there's fragmented guidance. Uh, they use a lifecycle model. I'll say a little bit more about that. Um, they, you know, promote a lot of uh, static analysis and upfront work in progress. And they lack community involvement, and that's essential to being openness in a fast-moving field. I should mention there are some works. We are very much aware of these, about how they, people can open up some of these existing industry guidance. But again, um, we feel that something more comprehensive is, is needed. So just to recap here, what were some of those lessons learned? We, we, got out of developing the DP box standard. Well, we need for a sustainable home for that activity. And the open group has always been that sustainable home for business standards. Uh, we need the um, governance for the standards. We need to have curation principles to know to separate the good from the bad. Uh, we need the minimum viable product. And we want the practitioners to have skin in the game. We want them to be actively contributing to the standard. So with all that in mind, uh, we've formed the uh, Digital Practitioner Workgroup. I'll let you read the, uh, the mission statement here for a second. Hopefully everybody is seeing the slides. Um, again, this is online, so you can get it there. And uh, we've been very active. Uh, we've got our standard out. The DP Box standard is out there. And as we'll hear later, our certification program as well. And one of the key findings we had is we work through these is, you know, we got our definitions in place. We want to move past that <coughs> confusion, <coughs> excuse me, that you saw in that Tom Fishborn cartoon. And so we've got these, these uh, definitions, which you can read in the DP Bach. I think the central one to me is this idea of what's a digital enterprise. Some, and it's an organization that delivers value uh, either because they have Digital, digital products and services, you know, that you're, you know, an online delivery organization, or you've got physical products and services that are obtained by the customer through digital means. So digital is the first way your customers introduce you. 
And you know, you use digital technology to do that. You've digitalized your company. You've got that platform that Remy mentioned, and you get to this state by radically transforming your digital, your business model to be a, a digital first enterprise. We started uh, the development of uh, the DP in the DPWG with a contribution by one of our members, uh, uh, Charlie Betts, who wrote a um, a uh, textbook called Managing Digital Concepts and Practices, and we've abstracted the information from that, the normative information, the real fundamental body of knowledge uh, for uh, digital practice into the DPBOC publication. So I want to take a quick run through what's uh, inside that. I'm not going to get into the details, but I want to talk about how, how it's organized. And so I said earlier that we need to make sure that we're, we're carefully curating all of this digital knowledge. And I'll, I've got here the, a list of the uh, curation criteria that we use. Um, I'll let you read these. Uh, one of the, I'm going to highlight a few of these. We're very keen to make sure that we're only using things that are current. Um, very fast moving field, as I've said. And we need to make sure that we're staying abreast of current practices. We want to make sure that we can verify that these practices are actually in use in the field. Um, we want to make sure that we're compatible with existing frameworks, that we're not invalidating the knowledge that the industry has built up over the years. Of course, I mentioned um, agility as a foundation. The Open Group firmly believes that enterprise architecture is necessary to a sustainable enterprise, so we want to make sure we're connected with that. Um, and I'll get to uh, some of the uh, this bit about the scaling model level. I do want to mention that it is developed as a digital product. We do drink our own champagne here in that this is developed using agile and DevOps techniques. We use uh, online um, editing. We use GitLab, and we have a CI CD chain where we can rapidly update the document. We want to make sure our, our narrative is coherent. We want we, our, our document uh, does give an overview of the whole, what we believe is the whole body of knowledge needed to be digital. We want to cover the whole subject, but we also provide pointers to the underlying concepts so you can get more material uh, when you need it. So let's talk a little bit about how we, can, how we organize this DP BOC, and this is relevant to our principles. So I'll go through this. So sort of quickly, you know, one way of, of managing uh, content, information content, is to take a stack approach. Um, we use this all the time in the standards world. We use this all the time in lots of uh, complex subjects, like you know, algebra is the foundation for trigonometry, which is the foundation for calculus. Um, and this is a very common layer. We could have gone down this. And the, the reason we have a concern about this is the tendency towards reductionism um, that you uh, believe that the layer above you is trivial if you finished your level. Um, and that you can do easy comp decomposition of the stack. Um, another approach is the life cycle uh, here. You've seen, you know, requirements, waterfalls, and things like that, uh, or sometimes simplified to plan, build, run. This has its use, and stage gating does have a lot of value, um, but it's also prone to promoting. Um, excessive stage gating, and then moving away from that agile and rapid feedback that Remy mentioned in his presentation. And so we think this is a little bit of counterintuitive to the digital world, so we're bypassed that. Our key insight was uh, one, and I, the, uh, I'll give the, we've got the John Gall Paul quote here, but this uh, picture is by Henrik Nyberg, um, that uh, simple system, complex systems evolve from simple systems that things scale naturally from you know, small starts grow into, into uh, big enterprises. So when we made our choice on how we would organize all of this, we had the stack, we had the life cycle, and we had scale. And for the DP BOC, we chose to organize it by scaling or the emergence model. And we start, this is a, what we call from startup to enterprise principle. Um, we start with a uh, 
just the practical questions for a small startup activity or a, a activity that is firewalled inside an organization to get started. Uh, they will grow into teams, so you think about what's needed at the team level. Uh, you have a challenging transition when you grow outside the size of one team. How do you manage across teams? And then how you get to the level of management concerns that you have when you have a large enterprise. And you can see that that uh, emergence, those four emergence levels are mapped into what we call the competency areas in DP Bach. Um, again, I don't want to read all of them, but I urge you to go look at the, the DP Bach, and uh, you'll hear later today about some additional material. You can get a quick overview. But you can see here we've got each one of them managed or mapped to the right emergence level. And this is essential so that when people are getting started, they're not overwhelmed with the, oh, what do I do next? And oh, you know, here's a million different practices I have to think about. No, we focus you on just what you need to get started and then what you need to do to manage these very difficult transitions from the, you know, your one or two people to a team and then from a team to multiple teams and then running a big enterprise. Of course, like all open group standards, uh, we believe that certification is fundamental to uh, driving the creation of knowledgeable practitioners. So we, of course, have backed the DP box standard uh, with a training and certification ecosystem for a digital workforce. So what did we learn? What did we learn when we were doing all this? And what's it gonna do uh, for future evolution of open group standards? Well, we, we learned a lot and we've tried to abstract that out into a set of principles for this. And I'm gonna go through these again, probably more quickly than I have, but let's uh, try to keep on time here. We've got three overarching sets of principles for business, content, and quality. And I'll let you read these principles, but the key guiding business principles are that we want to have consistent, uh, consistent digital standards coming out of the open group, that they not only uh, refer to each other, they refer to each other's information, that we use consistent terminology, and, and um, it's easy to navigate from one to the other. And that people understand that these are, are consistent standards. We wanna make sure that we give people guidance. Now, again, our principle of emergence, we want to give guidance to people that is relevant throughout their entire careers. We also wanna recognize that there are a lot of practitioners who have existing knowledge and are certified in those knowledge areas. We wanna give them the way to connect in to those existing certifications and help them make the transition to some of our digital standards. On the content front, um, we're, we're based on some of the things I mentioned earlier, that you're using a digital first business model, your value delivery is through digital means, that we assume that you're using agile techniques, that you're using uh, DevOps, uh, for continuous delivery so you get those fast feedback loops. Um, we want to adopt a, a lean development and product management approach. Again, don't introduce more complexity than you need to for the appropriate stage of your evolution. I've already mentioned the emergence principle that we want to guide enterprises as they grow in complexity. We also want to help enterprises who are maybe restructuring to uh, move forward as they break out into teams or move to a more agile methodology. On the quality front, I've mentioned some of these already. Obviously, we want to you know, get back to that Tom Fishburne cartoon. We don't want there to be a lot of different words meeting the same thing. We want to have consistency of terminology. We want to have the standards cross-reference each other. Agile is so important, I've got it in here twice clearly. Um, and we want to use those strong curation standards to make sure we stay up to date. Um, now, I want to say something about these principles. These are not just slides. These are being moved into a document. And the document is going to be called um, Principles for Open Digital Standards at the Open Group. And for those of you who are Open Group members, 
i.e. you work for an open group member organization, uh, we want your input. And these will be opening to uh, our company review process on uh, April 30th, just in uh, a few days from now. So please, uh, please jump in. We don't have any, um, any monopoly on knowledge just because we're here at the, uh, you know, working on open group meetings. We need to hear from the industry as a whole. So please, please join in that. So with those principles in mind, um, you know, I want to, again, I've, you've seen this slide before. I want to talk about a little bit about what uh, the organization is doing to meet these standards. Um, it's great having principles, but what are you actually going to do? And so uh, I want to say that the forums of the open group and the members of the open group have, have heard these messages. They've heard this transformation going on in industry and are responding to it. Um, again, there's going to be a session at uh, 410 today uh, called the Digital Management Outreach Session. You're going to hear a lot more about this, so I'm going to only touch on these quickly so I can stay within our 30 minutes. Uh, so we want to have that coherent set of standards. And we're already working in this space. Um, the visualization here, a little bit about what's going on. Um, obviously, our architecture forum is perhaps one of the premier forums of the open group. And we've got two tracks, at, well, at least two tracks of activity. You may hear more later uh, in this area. Uh, we've, of course, got our open Agile architecture framework standards, which we published as a snapshot. And there are components of that undergoing company review as we speak. Um, and we're taking the digital learnings from both the uh, DP BAC, the AAF, and IT for IT, and using that as input to improvements in the, the uh, TOGAF library. Um, a key part of that is the mappings between the standards. The DP BAC is looking at how we map to our architecture standards, and IT for IT have a very active program in mapping uh, between uh, TOGAF and the TOGAF standard and uh, the IT for IT standard. Within the groups themselves, also uh, moving beyond the architecture forum, IT for IT is, uh, has a very active reorientation towards uh, digital product management. And the DP BAC, of course, continues to evolve for developing further digital workforce skills. And all of these are guided by these uh, principles for open digital standards, which we'll be publishing as a guide. So I'll quickly go through the, uh, what I, what's going on in the forum. Again, please come back to that 410 session so you can hear the real details. Some key points going on in the Agile architecture framework is that this concept of a dual transformation. You have an Agile enterprise, and that's necessary for a digital enterprise. These two are not really separable, and they're developing what they call the adaptive operating model to make sure that all the key components of that are done. The architecture forum is looking at how they map all of this good guidance. And I've mentioned um, the DP BAC and IT for IT, uh, but uh, of course we've got other things like our business architecture, I think our security and um, data uh, science uh, activities need to get mapped into this as well. But we're looking at that from the overall business architecture and cultural change and strategy and IT implementation perspectives. And again, DP Bach is really looking at those, how, how to take those value streams, which you know, are frankly sometimes misunderstood to mean it's a, it's a left to right progression to actually emphasize the rapid and agile feedback uh, that is necessary through all stages of your product portfolio to uh, implement um, accountability and management for your Agile projects. So that's a whirlwind tour of what's going on at the open group in the Agile space. Of course, we can't do this without your active participation. So I'd please ask to have you come in and either join the forums, join the work groups, or participate in the various company reviews of this so we can make a set of great open standards for the digital world. So hope this has given you a bit of a direction on this. Uh, thank you, and hopefully, Steve, we've got just 
I actually guess, Steve, we have um, uh, question time a little bit later. 